Okay, what's up YouTube? This is J Man Tai. Man, today I have a video on the top five smallest artillery pieces used in World War One. Now, when I say artillery pieces, I don't mean mortars or grenade launchers. I mean the top five smallest artillery guns, as in actual cannons and howitzers, for example. So, in this video, I'm just going to go over the top five smallest artillery systems used during the First World War. Now, during World War One, both the Allies and the Central Powers used a variety of light infantry support weapons and light infantry anti-tank weapons so here are the top five smallest of those weapons number five is the german rhine metal 3.7 centimeter tank abaware cannon fisher or tac for short also known as the rhine metal 37 millimeter tac this was a German light anti-tank gun designed in 1918 towards during the last year of the First World War. This weapon weighed one point. This weapon weighed 175 kilograms or 386 pounds. Its caliber was 37 by 94 millimeter rim, and it had an armor penetration of 15 millimeters at 500 yards, and a maximum firing range of between 400 and 2,843 yards. Now the Rhine metal tank was the first true German anti-tank artillery piece designed during the war. Before you had the Tegewehr, which was a German anti-tank rifle, and you had the 13.2 millimeter machine gun or machine and Gewehr MT, which was a, a German scaled up uh, Maxim MG08 designed to fire the 13.2 millimeter uh, anti-tank cartridge, the same cartridge used in the Tegewehr, and those are pretty much Germany's standard anti-tank weapons for most of the war. Now later on in 1916, 1917, the Germans did design a auto cannon known as the Becker M2, and that was a anti-tank slash anti-aircraft machine gun. But the Rhine metal 37 millimeter TAC was the first true anti-tank gun, as an anti-tank artillery piece used by the Germans, and was also one of the smallest artillery guns used by the Germans, with the exception being the uh, German uh, mortar systems. Those are actually smaller than this, but in this video, I'm only counting artillery cannons, you know, cannons and howitzers. And the TAC, Rhine metal TAC, was the smallest of the German wheeled artillery used during the Second World War. It's also one of the um, rarest anti-tank weapons of the war in terms that most people have never heard of this weapon, even though the Germans did manufacture about 600 of these during the war. The only problem with this gun was its armor penetration was only 15 millimeters, you know. Uh, yeah, that's strong enough to penetrate any of the British, the British and French tanks. For example, the Mark 1 through 5 series only had between 6 and 12 millimeters of armor, so this weapon was pretty much overkill and the Renault FT-17 only had 8 to 15 millimeters of armor. So this weapon wasn't good enough to destroy tanks, but in the post-war era, the Rhine metal tank would have been pretty useless, especially by the time World War II came around. Which brings us to the next gun on the list, number four, the Canada 75 Court Model 1916 Schneider. This was a, a tank gun originally. This weapon was originally designed as the main armament for the Schneider CA-16, which was a French medium tank that was designed during the First World War. In fact, it was the first French tank to enter service. But the 75 millimeter Blockhaus Schneider was also used as a light infantry support gun. Now, when the Schneider CA-1916 tank was designed, the French had originally planned to build to make at least to make at least 700 to 1,000 of those vehicles, but ultimately the French only produced about four to 500 uh, Schneider CA tanks, meaning they had a large number of leftover 75 millimeter Blockhaus Schneider tank guns. Many of those weapons were later used as infantry support weapons, and that's what you're seeing here. The 75 millimeter Blockhaus Schneider was chambered for the 75 by 241 millimeter rim cartridge. The weapon system as a whole had a weight of 175 kilograms or 386 pounds. This weapon had a maximum firing range of, of 2,200 meters. And it was one of the rare infantry support weapons used by the French military. Some of these were also captured and used by the Germans. And the Germans also stripped some of these weapons from destroyed Schneider CA-16 tanks um, between 1916 and 1918. So the Blackout Schneider is one of the strangest or smallest French 
the light support guns used during the First World War. These weapons were also used during World War II, during the Battle of France, and during the Battle of Belgium, also in 1940. So these weapons did see a, you know, these weapons did have a long history of usage, both during World War I and World War II. And as one of the, I guess, stranger French uh, light support guns, or light infantry support guns, used during the First World War. Which brings us to the next French gun, or number three. Number three is the Hotchkiss 37 millimeter uh, model 1916, also known as the Canon de Infantry, um, the 37 millimeter model 1916 TRP, which was another light infantry support gun designed in 1916. This weapon was chambered for the 37 by 94 millimeter rim cartridge. Uh, and it had a overall weight of 108 kilograms or 238 pounds. This weapon was also used in the Second World War as a cheap anti-tank weapon. And during World War II, this weapon had an armor penetration of between 15 and 20 millimeters at 400 to 500 meters. And its overall range was between 400 and 2,500 yards. Now, the Hotchkiss 37 millimeter model 1916 was designed as a cheap, lightweight, infantry support gun and it was used by both the French and later on the American Expeditionary Force between 1916 and 1918. Uh, this weapon was actually one of the better guns used by France. You remember during World War One, I, I would say about 50 to 60 percent of all of France's artillery was severely antiquated. I mean the French were using guns that were designed in some cases all the way back in the 1870s and includes light artillery pieces like the 47 millimeter Hotchkiss uh, model 1885 and a lot of these older guns were simply too outdated for World War One. and this is one of the guns that were designed to supplement some of the antiquated light artillery pieces and it was pretty useful in its role as a, an anti-infantry weapon you know the Germans actually did capture some of these weapons too and they also used them as anti-tank weapons just like the French would later use them as anti-tank weapons in the second world war and during world war ii these weapons saw a these, these weapons were used again as cheap anti-tank and anti-infantry support weapons during the battle of France and they were also used um, by the Germans during the Normandy camp campaign in 1944 which was the last usage of these weapons and so yeah that was pretty much it for the Hotchkiss 37 millimeter model 1916 and the next gun is number two the number two smallest gun comes from Russia and is known as the Rosenberg 37 millimeter M1915 which was the standard light Russian infantry support gun now this weapon was a light infantry support artillery gun designed in 1915. It, was, it too was chambered for the 37 by 94 millimeter rim cartridge and a weight of 180 kilograms or 397 pounds. That's largely from the 8 millimeter gun shield that's mounted on this weapon. This weapon had a maximum firing range of 3.2 kil kilometers or two miles. Now keep in mind, even though this gun weighs more than the French uh, 37 millimeter gun, that's largely because of the gun shield. Now these weapons were used both with and without the gun shield. If you take the gun shield off of this thing, it weighs only half of that 397. That's because most of the weight comes from that gun shield. Now the Rosenberg was the standard light infantry support weapon for the Imperial Russian Army during World War I. It is one of the smallest artillery systems used in World War I by Russia, with the exception of the Russian mortar systems. The Russians did have their own um, smaller infantry support mortar systems. But in terms of field guns, this is the smallest of the Russian field guns. I mean, this thing is tiny. I mean, uh, it also wasn't that effective, you know. It was. It had the same problem that all of these smaller um, anti-infantry weapons had, you know. Um, the ammunition was just simply too small. Keep in mind, during World War I, the Russians didn't have a lot of weapons. They always had a lot of weapon shortages during the war, and that includes shortages of modern artillery. 
Um, just like the French military, the Russian military also had a ginormous amount of antiquated artillery. I would say the Russians probably had more antique artillery than the French did. So this Rosenberg 37 millimeter M1915 was, you know, one of the more modern guns, probably the most modern artillery piece in the Russian military during World War One. These weapons were also captured by both Germany and Austria-Hungary and used against the Russian forces during World War One. I. I have heard some sources state that this weapon was also used in World War II, but I haven't seen any photographs of it, but I assumed it probably was. Um, during World War II, the Russians were using pretty much whatever they can get, especially during the Operation Barbarossa campaign from 1941 through 1942. You know, when the Russians were losing the Second World War. So I'm pretty sure they probably used these weapons in World War II, but probably not to the extent that they used them in World War I. And, and during World War I, this was the smallest Russian artillery piece, you know, with the exception of w Russian grenade launchers and mortars that were used during the First World War. And that finally brings us to, to the smallest gun on the list, and that brings us to number one the Austro-Hungarian Skoda 3.7 centimeter infantry Geschütz M1915, which was a light infantry support gun used by the Austro-Hungarian military. This weapon was designed in 1915 and it had a weight of only 84.3 kilograms or 186 pounds. So this weapon literally weighed as the same weight as the average adult male back in those times. This weapon was chambered for the 37 by 57 millimeter rim cartridge and had a range of between 400 and 2,406 yards. This weapon was the smallest field artillery or infantry support um, artillery gun used in World War One, and it was used by Austria-Hungary. Now, the Austro-Hungarians had a lot of strange weapons, you know. They had a lot of unique weapons, just like the British are seen as the quirky um, arms designers. The Austro-Hungarians were pretty much the same. They also had a lot of quirky weapons, and this is one of the those weapons. They had a lot of quirky artillery systems and infantry weapons as a whole. This weapon was used by Austrian defensive troops during the war, and it was, it had mixed reviews. I mean, it was meant to be an infantry support weapon or an anti-infantry weapon. Uh, this weapon was also used during the Second World War by the Kingdom of Italy and Poland. So I'm assuming it didn't do well in Poland as Poland was defeated in less than a month during the Second World War. But it was also used by Italian mountain troops during the Second World War. So this weapon did have a long um, history of being used by various factions. But um, it was also used by Austria and Hungary during the interwar years before being replaced by a more modern German artillery during the Second World War. Keep in mind Germany annexed Austria in 1938 and Hungary had a lot of its weapons um, upgraded during the Second World War when they joined the Axis powers. So this weapon um, did have a long history of usage and it is literally the smallest artillery piece um, used during World War I. So what do you all think of this list? Which one of these five weapons did you like the most? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.